Korea's vicious young dictator exploding with confidence tonight. His government's news anchor uses new, very aggressive language to project Kim Jong-un's threat. Kim Jong-un said we now have the clear capacity to directly and realistically attack American bastards who continue to attempt to invade the Pacific. Kim's just tested two medium-range ballistic missiles. One failed, but weapons monitors call the other one a partial success because the missile flew 250 miles and even briefly entered space. Saying that he can realistically attack Americans and not just the U.S. in general, that's a new level of threatening language from Kim, right? Yes. The, the potential for provocation and, and provocative language is enhanced by Kim uh, by the fact that now he has the technology that goes to match the language. When Kim perfects the so-called Musadon missiles he just tested, experts say he'll be able to strike the Aleutian Islands in Alaska or U.S. military units on Guam. A U.S. intelligence official tells CNN tonight Kim's aggressive language, his celebration of this missile launch, underscores his regime's aspiration to be recognized as a nuclear power. Analysts say Kim also wants to fend off the threat he perceives from his principal enemies, who've just wrapped up a massive military exercise on his doorstep. He wants to deter America from even threatening to intervene. He wants to deter South Korea at the same time, obviously. Um, and to do that, he wants to be able to say, I can attack American bases, kill Americans in their beds. Kim's also believed to be toughening up against the U.S., possibly to extort concessions. Any real provocation where he fires one missile off that's with a real warhead does some damage, he'll be decimated. Uh, Pyongyang will become essentially a, a bowl of glass, and I think he knows that. Still, there are tens of thousands of Americans in Kim's line of fire. More than 28,000 American troops are deployed in South Korea. Analysts worry tonight that if Kim tries to provoke South Korea with artillery fire, maybe a commando raid, that a mishap, a miscalculation from Kim's forces could harm those Americans, then we could be in for a dangerous escalation. We are just getting this in. The U.S. officials we are speaking to, Brianna, are telling CNN there was a very serious incident with the Iranian Navy yesterday. Now, this is just one day after that video everyone saw of a different incident. But yesterday, in the northern end of the Arabian Gulf, there was an Iranian fast attack craft that came out into the water and began harassing two U.S. Navy ships and a Kuwaiti Navy ship. The Iranians, we are told, were circling the Navy ships. They were coming close. They would not leave. At one point, they came within 200 yards of one of the U.S. Navy patrol craft. The Navy, following standard maritime procedure, tried to call the Iranian ship. They got no answer initially. They fired flares. They did then have, a U.S. official says, a brief radio-to-radio -radio conver uh, conversation with the Iranians, but still, the Iranians did not leave. At that point, we are told that this U.S. Navy patrol craft, the USS Squall, then made the decision and fired three warning shots into the water to warn the Iranians to pay attention and to back off. This is standard maritime procedure for the U.S. Navy. It rarely happens. It has happened in the past. But this is standard procedure when a U.S. Navy ship feels threatened and that threat does not back off. That is really the last resort before you take lethal action. You fire warning shots into the water. So just yesterday, three warning shots fired at the Iranians. And this comes one day after that video uh, that we all saw that four Iranian um, ships, uh, again, Revolutionary Guard Corps ships, came out and harassed another U.S. Navy ship. Perhaps the bottom line here is to note that the U.S. believes these Iranian boats belong to the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps. This is one of the most militant arms of the security and military services in Iran. This is not the regular Iranian Navy. There is always concern that these maritime forces of Iran that are doing this are not under the central control of the government. And there is always concern that things can get out of hand. The U.S. Navy yesterday taking the action to fire warning shots at the Iranians and tell them to back off. Hey, Amra, those propaganda photos out of North Korea really are remarkable because they, they reveal a side of uh, the North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un, we don't normally see as he was celebrating with his scientists, projecting so much confidence that he feels he has finally perfected this missile technology capable of delivering a nuclear warhead to his enemies, including the United States. 
rising from the waters off the eastern Korean peninsula, an ominous new threat from North Korea. The successful test firing of submarine-launched ballistic missile Hukguk Song, meaning Polaris, the North Star. A weapon North Korean leader Kim Jong-un says puts the U.S. and its allies within striking range of a nuclear attack. A triumphant announcement on the North Korean news. State propaganda images claim to show a perfect launch. Before dawn Wednesday, anxiety turns to exhilaration. Kim Jong-un and his officers smiling, laughing as they track the missile some 500 kilometers, more than 300 miles, further than any previous attempt. The testing and the... the um phase of the, the development is very rapid. A launch attempt just last month failed. A missile fired four months ago in April traveled just 30 kilometers, around 18 miles. Analysts believe Wednesday's missile traveled 16 times further, meaning it can strike anywhere in South Korea, home to 50 million people and some 25,000 American troops. The latest launch as U.S. and South Korean forces engage in annual military exercises, similar to these in the spring. Pyongyang used the annual drills as a direct provocation. Troy University professor Daniel Pinkston says war games are vital to keep the peace. Uh, looking at North Korea's capabilities, um, their development programs for weapons of mass destruction and their delivery systems, the shrill rhetoric that comes out of uh, Pyongyang, their objectives are very clear. Weapons development continues at a breakneck pace, despite nearly universal condemnation and unprecedented international sanctions. They will allocate resources from other areas and devote it to the missile and nuclear programs. Kim Jong-un called Wednesday's before dawn launch the greatest success and victory. Feeling the intense pressure to succeed, one officer appears overcome with tears of joy, or perhaps relief. Russia is deploying its ballistic missile and attack submarines in numbers, range, and aggression not seen in two decades. In an exclusive interview, the commander of U.S. naval forces in Europe tells CNN the buildup is part of an alarming strategic view. They're very clear that uh, NATO is viewed as an existential threat to Russia. Our military capability, they view in a very visceral way as a threat to Russia. Adding to U.S. concern, Russia is deploying new submarines that are harder for U.S. naval forces to track and detect. Following years and billions of dollars in investment, they are quieter, better armed, and have a greater range of operation. The submarines that we're seeing are much more stealthy. They're acoustically quieter. Um, we're seeing them have more advanced uh, weapon systems, uh, missile systems that can attack land at uh, long ranges. The increased Russian sub activity is backed by a much broader military expansion. Russia is adding or upgrading some 12 naval bases across the Arctic Circle, expanding its capability to send subs in numbers through the crucial Greenland Iceland UK gap into the Atlantic and closer to US and NATO territorial waters. Moscow has also newly stationed six submarines in the Black Sea, giving Russia new capability into the Mediterranean. The U.S. believes the new activity is designed to deny NATO, including the U.S., the ability to operate within Russia's so-called near abroad. Increasingly alarmed by Russia's new sub-deployments, the U.S. and its NATO allies are launching new training exercises in anti-sub warfare and deploying new systems, including the P-8 Poseidon. So these are sonar buoys dropped into the water to track submarines. The plane can be equipped with torpedoes to destroy those submarines. Russia's growing military activity extends above the surface as well. A Russian fighter jet's flyby of the USS Donald Cook this week, coming within 30 feet laterally and 100 feet vertically, is behavior that U.S. naval commanders have not witnessed since the Cold War. We had issued radio calls in both English and Russian, and the aircraft didn't respond, and proceeded on a course directly at the ship. So while we've seen these interactions before, this one was different because of the proximity to the ship, the altitude, and the flight path that it took. These are the big guns of Russia's modern army. The Iskander M missile system seen launching a cruise missile during a carefully choreographed training exercise in April. And yet this is not NATO's biggest fear. Last year, President Putin announced more than 40 new missiles would be added to Russia's nuclear arsenal, prompting concerns in Washington of a new Cold War.